Hello, that's called the NBA. <laughs> will, you not, will you pick me up on the other speaker? Well, welcome everybody. We're talking about prayer. Glad to have you all night. Sorry, we just found out we weren't even on with the microphone. So, um, but glad that you're with us tonight. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's go ahead. Ephesians chapter 6, verse um, 18 says, Praying always with all manner of prayer and supplication in the Spirit, watching there unto um, with all perseverance for all saints. Amen. We, uh, we were talking about the prayer of faith. We talked about the prayer of um, binding and loosing. talked about the prayer of consecration and dedication. Uh, talked the prayer about the prayer of worship, adoration, and thanks, and, and, and um, um, worship, adoration, and praise. talked about the prayer of thanksgiving. Uh, we're talking about tonight the prayer of intercession. Go with me, if you will, to the 62nd chapter of the book of Isaiah. The 62nd chapter of the book of Isaiah. Um, if we, um, if we look in our world today, it's, it's becoming blatantly obvious that we haven't done our job as the church, that the church is so in bed with their own desires and politics that they're willing to support anything, and uh, there has to be a change. The church is to be the standard setter, and um, I I. I, I for the life of me, cannot understand how a born-again believer can support anyone, any party that cheers and rejoices over signing into law the right to kill a baby at, uh, right up to birth in the womb. Take that same baby out one minute later and do the same thing to it and you're a murderer. But because it's in the woman's body, it's reproductive rights and it's not a baby it's a fetus this is this is heinous you can't get any more heinous than abortion double homicide that's right because she wanted it the whole thing is based on if the person wants it then it's murder if the person doesn't want it then it's abortion it's legal and we, it's just evil. And in the way that people were cheering and smiling and rejoicing and gloating, we are we, we, we have got a job to do. We have got to get back to being. And, and if, I don't care if you're a Christian out there and you don't like what I'm saying. Turn me off. Go away. I don't I don't care, because you're ungodly if you're voting for that kind of stuff. That's the devil, and you have listened to the devil, and you're you actually you're giving yourself over to the devil, supporting gay rights, supporting abortion. Well, I don't. If you support the candidates, you do. I'm sorry. And so you could just not like me ever again. I don't care. Somebody's got to tell the truth. And we got to stop getting in our churches and talk. Listen, we have great compassion on women who've gone through abortion and then suffer the consequences of the emotional and psychological damage that does. I've, I've dealt with people. And the, that, that trauma lasts them a lifetime. It is psychologically and emotionally debilitating. And... Um, they don't feel good about what they did, but they're they're told that it's right, you know. And then and then these these evil people—they're just full of the devil. They are full of the devil. This is this is this is emphasized. It is it is disgusting. It turns your stomach, and uh, we're not praying enough. We are not in the church because we're we're in the bed with this because. Because it makes us feel good about ourselves. I know this party is going to give me this, and this party is going to give me that, and all this junk that we, we sell out to for ourselves. We have an obligation to, see, to follow God and be righteousness in darkness and light in darkness, no matter what it costs us. But everybody wants to be liked. They want to be accepted. They want to be in, you know... Um, what was this college, this college kid or high school kid? High school kid was absolutely raked over the coals and threatened and everything by, by people because he had on a, a, a Make America Great Again hat. Okay, you don't like his politics, fine. A high school kid, and you're threatening him, and you know, and about, and giving, he's got death threats going on for it. For, huh? The school had to close. Something's wrong. And it's a spirit. Now, this is going on in the world. The problem is that spirit is infiltrating the church. It's infiltrating the church. 
And make no mistake about it. This spirit of socialism, communism, Marxism is all about silencing the voice of the church. Cutting down dialogue. If, you're a, if you are a Bible-believing Christian in the world of the liberal left, you have no voice. As a matter of fact, you're a hate monger, you're a homophobe, you're this, you're that. And you can't say anything. While they scream and spit in your face and try to threaten to kill you and all this kind of stuff. And then demand tolerance from you. It is a plan of the enemy to shut the church down. And everywhere it's gone, it has. It's silent, it has silenced the church in public dialogue. Okay? So we go back into France 40 years later, 50 years later, 60 years later, and, you know, you, it, they, you're, you're plowing on concrete to get the gospel out again. Okay? Become a wasteland spiritually. So, Isaiah 62 6 says, I have set a watchman upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace that day and night. And ye, yet, uh, ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. I said, what? Watchman is an intercessor. An um, and one, one translation says, I said, an umpire. Okay? I said, one upon the walls. God has set watchmen, intercessors, upon the walls. And what does he tell them not to do? You're to, make, you're to make mention of the Lord, and you're to keep not silent. You're not to hold your peace day or night. So in the church, we have to be in prayer. We have to be in intercession. And we have to be praying about um, our nation, about other people, um, you know, for God to raise others up, others set others down. Um, we, we Listen, God's not willing that any should perish, but all that should, should, all that should, could, should come to the knowledge of the truth. On the other hand of this, we can't keep letting people, evil people, be in positions of authority and power. We have to pray them out. They have to be prayed out of their positions. Okay? The, you know, um, the, the uh, Catholic churches in New York are talking, fi talking finally about excommunicating Kumo because his stance on abortion, he signed that bill, and he, and he claims to be a Catholic. You should, you should have done that way, 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 way long ago. There shouldn't be a, a, a dialogue now. He should have been kicked out way back and marked by the Catholic Church. But nobody, no, I mean, in our Protestant churches, evangelical churches, we've gotten where we're weenified on issues. Yeah. We love people. We want to help people. But we've got to be interceding for nations, for individuals, for leaders, um, that change comes. If you have to set them up or set them down, they have to be set up or set down. Okay? And he's got watchmen. Okay? Isaiah 53, um, 12 says, For um, therefore I will divide him a great uh, a portion with the great. He shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul into death. That's talking about Jesus. Um, and he was numbered with the transgressors and bare the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Now, we need to be praying. We need to be praying for the Pelosi's. Okay? And, you know, let God bring whatever he needs to bring. If he needs to bring judgment or if he needs to bring whatever, whatever God knows, because he knows whether or not she'll turn. So we yield ourselves to praying, and then we put it in the hands of the righteous judge and let him do with, deal with it. But stop voting for these people, Christians. My God. I, I, I read stuff about Trump with people right and how he's ungodly, he's the devil. I'm thinking... The man supports the church. The man's not pro-abortion. Now, I don't like everything he does. But you turn right around and vote for people who want to whack the baby up in the womb at nine months and say that that's not ungodly, that's a woman's right. That's, that is the wisdom of this world. Earthly, sensual, and devilish. So I, I saw somebody post the other day that, that uh, Trump gives all of his salary to a, a charity organization each month. $150,000, $200,000, whatever it is a month. I don't know what he would get. I don't think it's that much. Um, the president gets at least four hundred fifty a year. Yeah. Okay, so, so that's ten. Oh, so per quarter. So that's three months. That's that's one hundred twenty thousand, one hundred one hundred thirty-three thousand. So about forty-three thousand, forty-four thousand dollars a a quarter 
for charity. So $133,000 he gives away, just gives his salary away. And they, they, they just absolutely lamb blasted the guy say, for supporting Trump's giving his money away for charity because he's evil. And I'm thinking, why are you not writing about the, your, your, your champions of abortion and sin and homosexuality? Like they're evil because the wisdom of this world is earthly, sensual, and devilish. And we, we made everything about, you know, if you're a white male, you're a racist. That's just it. You are a racist. You walk into the room, it doesn't matter. You're a racist. You know, that's, that's the dialogue today. And, um, you know, if you're, if you're a white male Republican, now, if you're a black Republican, you're an Uncle Tom. Yep. Or you're a house Negro. That, I mean, that's, you, you just, you, because you you can't be using your brain, okay? You can't can't be that they have a political ideolo- ideology that is um, aligned with the pl- Republican platform, not the people. Not all the, it's not, so people are, you like to kick out in a heartbeat, so you go drop them off a cliff, okay? But platform wise, they don't. They they they're against the gay marriage. They're against abortion. They're against these things. Okay, and if if you're a, if you're a black Republican, you're crucified instead of instead of honored. They see this spirits were operating, and it's creeping into the church. Um, doctor, the doctor, the surgeon, yeah, Ben Carson, neurosurgeon, godly man, and. He has been crucified because he dared to be a, a right-wing conservative. He, they have crucified that man. Instead of embellishing the fact that an African-American in this country is one of the, became one of the leading neurosurgeons in the world. Huh? Yes, yeah, first to separate Siamese twins. Instead of, instead of honoring that, crucified because his political ideology is against what? Socialist Marxist mindset, which is against the church. Okay? Um, when um, Alan Keyes was running for president, he was crucified. Very godly man. And he said some stuff because he said it from a spiritual standpoint. He didn't say it in political terms. They ate him alive. But the man was right on. I mean, you're talking about an intelligent man. Now, I was ready to line up and vote for him. I can be honest with you. Before Obama won, I was, I was ready for our first African-American president to be Alan Keyes. I was, I was lining I was ready to go. I voted for him in the primaries. Okay? Just, I, I don't need to tell me to tell you what I do.